X Radio, we take that very seriously. If you're looking for quality debate, holding power accountable, and getting to the bottom of every issue, One hundred six point one Next Radio. This is the Big Talk. My name is Kanere Mugume, and uh, welcome all of you watching in Uganda and around the world. Today on the show, we shine a spotlight on the new cabinet. President Jerome Seveni has reshuffled the cabinet. Many of the ministers have maintained their positions. However, there's um, a couple of changes uh, that have uh, really come uh, to uh, the public arena as a shock. The question is, what does the new cabinet? Uh, does spell for uh, the future of Uganda, but also the new changes in the UPDF. The army is now going to be led by General Mohos Kainerugaba, who is the son of the president. So many who have been saying perhaps the MK project is um, off the radar. Is it finally taking shape in the studios this morning? I'm hosting a terrific panel to discuss all this. Nicholas Opio, um, <laughs> good to have you on the show. <laughs> Political <laughs> analyst, good to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Canary. Good morning to uh, my fellow panelists. Good morning to the listeners and uh, viewers of this fantastic radio station. Thanks for honoring our invitation. Also joining me on the show is Dr. Media Matembe, an elder um, in this country, senior citizen, and also, what do I say? Who has been a child of God, <laughs> who has been uh, before in the cabinet, um, taken off the radar um, by President Jerome Seveni. I don't know what that felt like. I was very happy to be relieved of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you on the show, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> I want to greet people. <laughs> Good to have you on the show. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me, although I really don't like these invitations, but Munang, mm. if when God calls, you answer. Mm. But I want to greet people who are listening. I'm so happy to be here with my son here. He's, he's the one to be talking <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I think my responsibility is just filling the gaps as, as, as the spirit releases words <laughs> to me. Mm. But otherwise, thank you for inviting me. But, Mommy, that would be very unfair because mm. you have a wealth of experience in the politics of this country. Perhaps uh, between me and you, you're the only person who has been in cabinet and been out of cabinet. You've been in parliament and out of parliament. So you ought to share more than... Uh, so you are right. Yeah. I have seen it all. Mm -hmm. I have said it all. <laughs> I have done it all. So now what? So when you, keep, when you keep quiet, then perhaps who, who shall we drink wisdom from? <laughs> you see now, that's God speaking. Anyway, um, on the show today, uh, we'll also be joined by the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi and uh, the Honorable Jared Karhanga in just a bit. But first, uh, Nicholas Opio, I want to begin with you. This new cabinet, you see the new faces... Um, some of the faces have been maintained. Um, how do you receive the news of the cabinet and, and, and what do you have to say about the changes? No CDF now in cabinet <laughs> as a junior minister. No, no, no. You know, the, the changes in, 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 in cabinet really is not significant. Mm. Uh, they are very nominal. They are very minimal. Uh, the bigger changes have, hap have, have happened outside of the cabinet reshuffle, which is in the UPDF. Uh, those are more consequential. In terms of the politics of this country, uh, but I think that <coughs> President Museveni, in shaking his cabinet, has done one or two things. Uh, the first is that he has paid nominal lip service uh, to his commitment to the fight against corruption uh, by dropping the two cabinet ministers who are facing trials at the anti-corruption court uh, for the Mabati scandal. Um, he left the third one, uh, Mr. Logolobi, uh, who is also facing trial. He's, he's been maintained. Um, and so he can say he's taken action against the corrupt, but in fact those actions are nominal. Uh, I, think, I think it is negligible because the vast majority of people who have been involved in the Mabati scandal, even though they haven't been charged in court, are still serving in his cabinet and have been retained. It would only make sense if he had a whole sweep of all those implicated in corrupt scandals uh, in his cabinet. But he has maintained most of them. So in that sense, the uh, dropping of Honorable Goretu Chitutu and the Honorable Agnes Nandutu, uh, in my view, was just lip service uh, to his um, long MP commitment to the fight against corruption. The second thing is that what you then have seen is that 
person number seven is either unable or unwilling or afraid to to drop what really should be retiring ministers. I mean, there are people who are physically unwell, uh, who should have been home a long time ago, um, whose continued stay um, in the cabinet is really for their own benefit as opposed to the benefit of the people of this country. Mm. I don't think that uh, Muse Honorable Moses Ali should uh, still be waking up every day to go and make difficult decisions about this country. I think mm. we, we all see that uh, he's not in very good shape. He should be back home retired. Um, I don't think that uh, uh, the Honorable Kadaga, you know, should still be tossed around back and forth, uh, you know. Uh, so he's really maintained that old crop, uh, you know, in his, in his cabinet. Uh, for whatever reason, I think my view is that uh, they should he should be long, long gone, including including his wife. Uh, I've just been reminded. Also, really very old, served, served her bit, now should be retired, but, you know, be still maintained. The, the first lady and the minister of education. Yeah, yeah. the first lady. But, but, but he only has one wife, I thought. When I say his wife, that's <laughs> what I meant. <laughs> no, you are referring to Moses Ali, so <laughs> I thought I would, I would oh draw yes, that distinction. Oh, yes, to clarity. Yeah. Not Moses Ali's wife, the <laughs> previous wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but the, um, the, the, the patronage has played a very big part in the appointment of, um, of ministers in this country since 1986, actually. Uh, the balance of 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 religion of of region, the balance of of uh, gender, and all of those things. Um, do you see that reflecting in, in in this year's cabinet? No, no. If you are from Bugisi, you say you lost because the, the Bugisi <laughs> have lost their. <laughs> <laughs> what will they actually say? <laughs> we we have uh, we have we have eaten big. <laughs> you have eaten big. <laughs> we have the Minister of Justice. Yeah. We have the Minister for Disaster Preparedness and the Minister of State, all by the way from one district. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and so you, you you say we have we have won, but you see the thing is, and and this is my third point that I wanted to make was that you have the continuation of the fisherman mentality that Museveni uh, uh, had at the start of this term. Uh, I mean, people like Balam, really, um, uh, real fishermen, no experience in public service, just a music promoter, businessman. Um, I don't think that he can understand, um, you know, a, a cabinet policy <laughs> position, mm. much less read the national budget, understand it. Uh, but he's, he's now the minister. So what you then see is people who are coalescing around uh, the Mohozi project, um, regardless of their competence, it's just their passion for, for his son, have been elevated. Uh, you know, the two young ladies, my sister Lilian Abair, uh, who really has, for all intents and purposes, given up everything else to support the Muhozi project. Uh, Nyamutoro, the, the young lady from West Nile, from Nebi. And so you see, you've got those people around the Muhozi project now becoming members of cabinet. Mm. Um, and, and, and I think that um, it is either an endorsement of that Muhozi project, if people took it as a joke, now it's beginning to crystallize what the objective really was. And but the most significant change, as I said, was in the in the army, not in the cabinet. Um, and, and to understand how that is significant, you've got to look back a few months ago when President Museveni handed over uh, the role and command of the armed forces to the then army commander, uh, General Mbadi. It, uh, didn't, it didn't take long until he... People were a bit confused mm. what was going on, uh, but it was really the culmination of what they said was an internal reform process that delegated the duty of the army com I mean of the command of the armed forces, which is a constitutional right, mm. a constitutional mm -hmm. role rather, uh, to the army commander. Uh, back then, people were a bit confused, but now you see why that was done because that entire function has now been given in the hands of the president's son, uh, somebody who has made no attempt to hide his interest in becoming the leader. Uh, and I think that. Uh, uh, it spells two things. One, it spells, uh, for those of you who know how elections work, that in the next election, what you're going to have is complete repeat of the chaos we had in the last election because you have somebody who has been accused of, um, or whose public conduct really, uh, so to speak, has not been a responsible one, uh, but also who has been accused of being part of the team that caused 
extrajudicial killings, abductions, and torture of people in the last election. Mm. And he's now in charge. He's not going to do any better. I think that what he's going to do is either repeat what he did in the last election, since he's now in charge of the armed forces. And I think for me, it spells doom, it spells violence the next election with a Muhozi in charge. I mean, somebody whose temperament, forget about his being the son of the president, his temperament, his public temperament, is not one that is uh, a calm, comforting one, well, whose own reputation uh, as, as, as a reckless a reckless person, uh, I don't think this deserves to be army commander, but this is what we have. It is going to be violence, in my view, in the next election. Interesting. And we'll look into and um, shine a spotlight on 2026, uh, Dr. Matemba, I want to bring you in here. Uh, one day you wake up and you see this list. You're once ethics <laughs> minister, but you're not e on the list. I want to take you back um, many years ago, um, probably twen 21 years ago when you dropped off the cabinet. What does that feel like, that you're once serving your country and you wake up one day, one morning, and you're not on the new list because of your decisions and what you decided to speak about? What, uh, what did that feel like? I think that was very, very happy if you are taking me mm. through that because I remember when uh, Nchara Magezi was the one actually, the late Magezi, when he rang me and said, you know, the, the president is reshuffling his cabinet and he's not taking you on. Mm. I said, praise the Lord. I said, does he expect any answer from me? A response from me she said uh, i don't know i said in case she asks you tell him this is the best decision he has ever taken for my life mm. so that's how i felt but anyway having said that but i have never never regretted having served for my good 20 years as a politician in this country and having served very distinctively you remember the positions which I held, very, very many, and honorable positions, and I retired honorably. Therefore, I don't regret, and I even always thank President Museven, in case I forget to say it even now. Mm. I thank him for that, together with his gallant soldiers, including my brothers, my cousins, my uncles, who went to the bush and fight to bring us redemption of Uganda. If he had not put that environment which he established and we worked in, I would never, you wouldn't have known that uh, a woman called Matende existed. Mm. Yes, I had studied, I was there, a lawyer, a lecturer, a worker in the Bank of Uganda, but I had you a went to passion. the DPP's office. I had a passion, I had, I ran out, I went to DPP's office mm. and within two months, mm. I could not s sustain to see the the suffering of the people. Mm. Eh? Those who were stealing chicken, eh? they, would, uh, they would stay in prison forever. And the ones who have robbed the banks, they would get sureties and get out. And remember my passion and vision was to fight for justice against unfairness and justice. And I went to this institution having studied law, knowing now I'm going to participate in promoting justice. And what do I find? Tony, you go to court and say, they ask for bail. You say, no, they don't have sure. Could I really contribute to that kind of injustice? I your conscience couldn't. So uh, I went to teach. I went mm. to teach. And that's so where politics found me. But don't take me Dr. away Matembe. to put me. I want to, to talk to uh, you about uh, the cabinet thing. Uh, yes, on the, on the cabinet, in, 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 in your book, mm. uh, titled The Struggle for Freedom and Democracy Betrayed, yes. Memos of uh, Media Matembe, mm. um, you say that mm. it would be good mm. if censured ministers and mm. those implicated in corruption were not elected or even reappointed. Yes. We have um, a number of them. We have uh, over the years seen that censured ministers are reappointed as, as, but as ministers. You, you, you even in the new cabinet, we have Francis But Namda. why should you take me to that question? Because what do I say and they implement? Me, my role is to talk. Didn't I say it even mm. after I had said it? You, you know that book. Don't take me from this issue. You know that book. Mm. Don't you know that immediately, you know that story, how I talked about the, these censured ministers when I said they should not be elected and how President Museven rang to tell me, go and tell the press. Withdraw it. 
isn't it in that book? It's in the book. Uh, now I why are you disturbing me? Let the people read the book and let me talk about the current. Let me talk about the current. Because in the new cabinet, there's essentially yeah. the minister. Okay, let's go to the new cabinet. Don't take me into... At times, I save myself from these words which mm -hmm. I use. Mm -hmm. But you provoke them. <laughs> 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 eh? I Let love people to. read I love that to. book. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, in that book, immediately after I had been elected as a, as a, as a member of parliament, in that book itself, eh? I was appointed as minister of state from minister. And the essential ministers, both of them, were appointed as full cabinet ministers. And you remember how I went and rejected and turned down his appointment because I didn't want it. Mm. But you know how he besieged me and felt like kneeling down. I said, who am I to make a president kneel? Don't make me say these things. They have not brought us today. What brought us today here so is what is going on. Mm. So the new I cabinet, a, transform what I want a transformative one or more of the same. Mm. In fact, what I want to say, I think it is Martin Luther King Jr. who said, that if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but at least continue moving. It's that principle that makes me to continue talking. Because what haven't I said? What haven't I said? In fact, I'm considering myself as a prophet these days. Because whatever you say, you see it coming. There's nothing I've not said about this wickedness. There's nothing I've left mm. unsaid. But what I want to say now on cabinet now is that you were right to say that I, wa I saw things and so I should talk about them. Me, when I went to cabinet, by, by the time I went to cabinet, I was in the parliament. You know, we would talk things in the parliament and you see maybe things are not going well. But, you know, uh, I started at LOC1. Whatever I thought we could not do at LOC1, I went to LOC2. To, 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 to. I reached the ch vice chairperson Nakawa division. Mm. Whatever I could not by, do By then it was actually even RC. Hey, whatever I could not do that, I had hope eh, that the parliament is doing it. Mm. So I went to parliament to do what I could not do. When I reached parliament, we, reached, we make decisions. Eventually, they are not implemented. We don't know what is happening. Mm. And I had hope. That cabinet is doing it. Mm. Finally, I reached cabinet. I tell you, the moment, the time I reached cabinet, and I, you, I went with my vigor, with my energy, you know, wanting to talk, I have reached now the final level where we are going to make decisions and improve our country. That was the vigor, that was the energy. And I remember the first thing of how we are talking about to whatever this, this agricultural thing which never worked. <laughs> I forgot. Nuts. Nuts. Do you know that we called nuts? We, as cabinet, we ended up saying this is nuts. But we can't, we had no powers about it. Mm. Because we saw that it could not work, it was not explained. But the World Bank of ours forcing it on them. And I said, but you people, everybody was saying, like, what can we do? What can we do? I said, what can you do? I thought this is a cabinet take decisions for Reject this country. It. Eh? Then somebody told me, wait. We have a conference. We had an induction conference in Jinja. Mm. I think about it was Chiyonga, was it Dandasari? Somebody told me, you know, Honorable, you wait. You will ask these questions to president when you go to Jinja. Mm. We went to Jinja, and I was there. So this man comes. He abuses the cabinet. You useless, hopeless people. Eh? You are given like even no body. You are worse than no body. No, 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 no. He talked, talked. Everybody was like this. He talked. Afterward, he abused the, the members of, of the public servants. He abused all these people. He abused them and said, you are useless. Wah, 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 wah. After that, I put up my hand. I said, Mr. President, I, it's very sad because we were lamenting at cabinet and I thought the lamentation will sto uh, stop when we meet you. Now you have sat there and lamented. So who is it that is going to sort out the problems of Uganda? I told him, for me, in my life, I have never failed. I've never failed, I, and I'm here to help you not to fail. You know my innocence and genuine naive, naive sort of attitude. Mm. And I said, I am here to help you. you. But one thing before I help, you ne I need to know. 
because you see you are attacking these people you are the only person since the government started who has not been reshuffled you are the one who has stayed all this time so i think you are the only one who knows what is it and i was very genuine what is it that prevents eh, this cabinet from doing what you want tell us the problem and for me once i get the problem i will help you that you fight this problem and I, the other thing i will not tell you i told him you are attacking public servants you are abusing them but even if by the time you came here if all these public servants were not there you wouldn't have found anything so please handle them well let let them be respected mama 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 when i finished oh the first bashing i got from president you, you Matende, who are you to think that I've done nothing in this country? Then he started listing all the good that he has done. If I had another opportunity to say now, I would have said, so why are you lamenting? <laughs> but I didn't have that opportunity. Mm. But everybody was like, Shh. And after that, in the evening, I think the next day, eh, the, 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 every time he was responding, Matembe's public servants, these Matembe's people, this, hey, he, I got it so became scared. a Matembe issue. Hey, I, he was, because I defended the public servants, mm. then he answered, Matembe's people, Matembe's, hey, I said, what is this? Anyway, me, I left. Now, the next day, this one PS came and, and said, that he, he told my PS, why don't you guide your minister? This is not how they talk to the president. Then my PS said, well, that's who she is. Then the other PS came and told me, you see, honorable, don't you know the president is a god in this country? You cannot <laughs> talk to the president. I said, what? Mm. My god is not this one. I am here to advise, and I will continue to advise. Why are you? Why am I giving you this background? Mm. To tell you, by the time I left the cabinet, I had concluded, if I tell you how she bashed me on the damn saga, after we had got mm -hmm. done investigation, mm -hmm. and I said this money has been spent, the man stood up and talked. I felt my heart was about to come out. And everybody was like this. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I pinch, pinch they were like that. <laughs> so by that time, I left and I went to resign. The two days I went, I said I want to resign. Then he told me, please, 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 you are doing your work well. Don't go. And, he, uh, and the, he, the same person was bashing you publicly. And he told me, mm. you know, at times, we are a people. At times, you know, you just lose it and talk, but please. And you know what he told me? Mm. He said, you see, you should have come and told me quietly, me and you. I said, but I couldn't find you, and I saw you going to take decisions which were wrong, and therefore that's why I was bringing this me message. Mm. And you know, he told me that next time, if you can't find me, and you see we are urging about something, I will wink. What do they call it? when? Yes, you winking. I will wink my eye, mm. so you stop there, so we shall get time and you tell me when we are to. Now, th I won't give you the details of all these things, but my conclusion is, by the time I left cabinet, I knew entirely that President Museven does not value cabinet at all. In practical terms, cabinet is a body which must be there to, to what language would you use? I use words. Mm. To rubber stamp. It, uh, mm. to, 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 to regarize or to, to when to regarize mm. or to ratify, mm. uh, to know that yes, there are bodies in this country, the executive it works the in the cabinet, but I process. can assure you, and those people cannot deny the cabinet does not mean anything to Museven. It is to be to go and endorse and to show to public that inst inst institutions are working according to what they should work. So, whether she reshuffles, whether she changes, she stopped long ago of appointing anybody who would make sense to cabinet. They are there, some of them, mm. but they don't. They fear. They are all like this, and by the way, they don't see him. You want to see the president? You, where do you see him? So, for him, the body is there. When he wants to, he comes, they endorse, and that's it. Therefore, mm. whether we shuffle or no we shuffle or whatever, they don't mean they don't mean anything. They are seated there. She will just talk, talk, and tell them this, this, this. 
you, you don't know how they were shaking, and those ones were even distinguished. <laughs> I, I remember when I remember they were pulling me down. Chidu, chidu, chidu the, the man was woo, 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 and they all do like this and me I put my hand you see so you don't know what is happening people need to know that these are the things which mm. happen therefore yeah. for me cabinet or no cabinet it doesn't make sense they are there to eat and drink and get their salaries and then another thing which I want to say and stop mm. what hurts me though is that these people who even when they would like to do work, they ha they can't. They must do what he wants them to do, and they must wait. But what disturbs me, a cabinet minister is supposed to be an advisor to the president. Eh? Now, if a minister cannot or is incapable of advising you when he's a minister, and you remove her or him, why do you make him a presidential advisor, <laughs> a senior presidential advisor to advise you when he couldn't advise you in cabinet. Mm. Now you put him all this thing which is created as over, over a dumping of a project for ple pleasing retired uh, Ugandans without knowing the impact on Ugandans. That's to reshuffle. Many of the ministers who were not uh, taken on were presidential senior advisors. They get the cars, they remain on the salary, Funny they are just officers. enjoying all these things, and they never see him, and they never advise him, but they are there earning taxpayers' money while the general public is suffering with poverty, mm. with misery, and that kind Thank of you, thing. Thank you, Dr. Matembe, and I, I, I really do appreciate you for that context um, um, and, 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 and uh, background uh, because you are once in cabinet. Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi, good to have you on the show. Um, I'm sorry for coming late. Yeah, I was caught up with one or two. It is Ramadan. Yeah, sometimes the uh, MPs are praying. not in town. They are in uh, Bukedi. Bukedi. <laughs> 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 we are surprised. Is there, is there a roll call? Because the the speaker is uh, launching a project, and, <laughs> the, president and the president is there. Can't <laughs> good to see you. Yeah. 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 I don't know whether uh, uh, that's how we remove the alarm. <laughs> I uh, didn't even know where the speaker is writing a hospital. Like I didn't even know, know that there was a cabinet yeah. reshuffle. It will, not take, <laughs> it will not take my attention. Yeah. yeah. Honorable, did I do? If I found the P, uh, yeah. it, will it, uh, it will not take my attention. So. Honorable, so did I uh, Karhanga, good to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. My apologies. Yeah. 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 Uh, Honorable Mwanga Chibum, let me begin with you. Um, would you say, because m m many have looked at this cabinet and, uh, you know, the culprits in the Mabati saga have been dropped, say finally the president is uh, um, taking a stand on, on corruption. Is this a transformative cabinet or more of the same? But also, as you answer that, is the MK project finally taking shape? Um, well, I think the biggest issue was not in the cabinet. Mm. The biggest issue is what happened in the army. Yep. Um, for the those who want to talk about the Mabati, the Mabati Corruption saga or case was lost when they failed to meet the vice president, the speaker of parliament, the, minister for the, the prime, prime minister, minister the minister of ex for, for so once it failed at that level, the, the, that was the end of it all. Mm. So for anyone who wants to follow up, that story ended, and you should not make news about it. Uh, because um, if there was anything serious about it, those are to be indicted. The moment they were not, um, it is uh, this other former journalist, hmm? Nandutu. Nandutu and, <laughs> and Gorochi Kikutu and Rigolovi and Rigolovi had survived. Um, I think they were just, it was just symbolism <laughs> now. <laughs> it was just symbolism. <laughs> <laughs> a minister of finance. <laughs> so it, it was just symbolism. You find it to give people that, like, a first said that something is getting done. Mm. But effectively, there was nothing going to happen. And I think finally, uh, along the way, even the Gigutu and Inandutu will be rehabilitated mm -hmm. and, and brought back, watch the space in some capacity. It may take a few, a few years, 
but uh, when we have all forgotten yes no yeah. you forgot that uh, the one of uh, gavi uh, uh, jim <laughs> and <laughs> even not a feel at one time had issues even kabone kabone ran now who is the minister eh? kaboyo who is the minister was by that time a civil servant mm. involved but here there so it's just a question of Ghanaians forgetting and people get back um, so, but then it is about completing now a process. For those who don't watch politics deeply, this dismantling of the Matembe, I met a senior minister whom I will not mention. When, uh, when uh, David Hose was dropped, he missed me on the step. He said, with the exit of David Mohose, I'm a commander the end of sobriety in UPDF has ended. Mm. He said David Mohose was the last of the people in the line who were sober mm. and the moment he has left and said because Zimbabwe and others with the due respect he's a decent man I've served with him in the committee of, uh, of defense he's my member now in the park he has not appeared at all <laughs> 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 he has not found time, but mm. he's my member. Mm. At a personal level, a very, very fine fellow. Okay, when you meet him. But he's, uh, he's another fisherman. So he was left there on a transitional basis. <laughs> he's a placeholder. Mm. <laughs> and when the, the other instrument, uh, the change of the structure, UPDF establishment. establishment happened, mm. For those who are initiated, the conclusion was it was being prepared for Mohose kind of regard. Two things are going to happen. One, now being a CDF, he will enjoy an unlimited access to classified experience. And if you want to do politics, then the one other thing you need are resources. Mm -hmm. So you will now get resources he needs, not directly from his father, but in a budget process. Because money will be voted to go to classified under UPDF, under the Ministry of Defense, and you'll access it. Therefore, Pirao is now going to be fully bankrolled hmm, by state resources. But I found Noko has also concluding is how effective now the repressive uh, regime mm -hmm. under him is going to be complete and total. You see, this has been a cycle. I may not call other things, but at every turn of election, there is a unit that harasses Ugandans. At one time, we had the Kalanga Action Plan and uh, Kakoza Mutale. And Kakoza Mutale. Mm. People forgot the Kakoza Mutale. Mm. At one time, my brother, um, uh, Mayombo, my and uh, Jeno, now, he stood for presidency. The who was in CMI, hmm? to the, the, the mm -hmm. eh? mm. we are effectively running the show. Mm. At one time, it was Patrick Amama Mbabad effectively running the show. Then it was Kare Kaihura. Then, for some small time now, it has been Anita Mong doing that dirty work and doing all those resources. The Speaker of Parliament, uh, speak of, of Parliament, mm. has been doing that work. I think now, even. Uh, and it is going to be financially squeezed a bit. Now I think Muhoz will, will, and then started the trend. All the army commanders have been posted in parliament as members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So That's most right. likely, even sooner or later, you may, because if they want now to deal with Zimbabwe, Mbadi now is, can be a member of parliament because he's the minister. Okay, you can now, remove Mbadi from I'm a representative and retain him as a, as a member of parliament because he's minister to create a vacancy for the CDF to come and be a member of parliament. Mm. If, if they want, they, I think they have now effectively created that avenue. So very soon, don't be surprised that Mohozi Kainerogawa will also be sworn in as a member of parliament. I see that's the pathway. Because I think they have created the room mm. for by making Mbadi a minister 
is the next line you remove the four, him as a, I'm a representative. Because as a minister, you can, he is, um, so, so I see, and then what is this so all so about? So, so they make Mozi uh, a member of parliament, and, and, and then what? Beca because the members of parliament that represent the UPDF are almost um, with no influence, uh, like you call them, that's listening, you listening polls. Th that's what you think. Mm. They, they have the, the the listening posts. The, the you yeah. see the reasons why they are brought to parliament. Mm. One of the reasons is, is pay. The highest paid member of parliament is a woman member of parliament and the UPDF representative. And the youth members of parliament. Uh, youth me not only f the female. Mm. Because the national female youth. The, the yeah. national mm. female. Because their marriage mm. is calculated uh, as they have the whole ma nation mm. as the constituency. So they are hugely paid. So good study. I'm officer senior that need to be habilitation I sometimes come in as members of parliament. All those that need the financial reward are brought in as members of parliament to enhance their pay and welfare. But Muhoz will be brought in parliament to complete his political journey of preparing him for being the next president of the Republic of Uganda. He's effectively now has taken over. If you study the other instruments, he has effectively taken over as the commander almost presidential powers mm -hmm. in terms of commanding the army are now vested in him, delegated, <laughs> delegated to him, mm -hmm. courtesy of the last changes they've made in the command and control structure of the army. And that was personal it's to hold the army, it's all the armed all forces. The, all the armed the forces. Mm -hmm. And that is personal to hold mm -hmm. And I had told someone else that to see, he's going to be a CDF, it has come to pass. Now, I think, and watch the space, Members of PL uh, have two <laughs> Pilau have two options. One, so many of them may decide to contest NRM party primary and and in NRM delegates. So by virtue of that, that Pilau is going to take over the NRM structure. They now have a platform Th that, that that you'll have NRM, but you have loyalists of, of PLU. Of, of PLU. Hmm. You, you, the, 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 that's the one likely and obvious option that PLO mm. people are going to go into the countryside funded by state resources. The chief has and fully supported by the army because the army and this so because he's a commander now who he knows when it comes to real elections, um, <laughs> the people who decide the which election who will win sometimes the security forces. Mm. So most likely if they decide to go and take over NRM they now have one, they have a distinct group and distinct people, and they will be known, they will come, and by the time you gather in Ambole, it will be now a Mohoz party. Interesting. So Interesting. So it's likely to be a mm. scenario. Mm. The other scenario, which they may take, but I don't think they will take, mm. hmm, is for them to consolidate and have candidates of their own mm. and be the, I've heard that. But my fe feeling is, gut feeling is that they are by the turn of these coming elections, Pira would have taken over in our own structure. So all these f people you see now, Secretary General, the Todongos, the Nani, unless they quickly <laughs> convert to Pirao, the writing is on the wall. Th th that's my conclusion. Okay. And thank, th thank you, uh, but Honorable Let me also conclude what is required of Ugandans, hmm. because I don't have a lot of time. I think it's the biggest insult to this country that the president has put Ugandans into. No president, not even a bote, not even a mean, attempted to make Ugandans stupid. All of us, by the way, eh, like this one is, is. And our inaction or silence or because effectively an attempt is being made, and I stand here to be quoted, an attempt effectively is being made to have a presidential monarchy. And I don't think this project stops on on Mohoz. It also go to a grandson. And I've seen the vaccination of the ready. Quietly, the president said, and people didn't match, that actually the real Mohoz 7 is not Mohoz. I've seen in my grandchildren. <laughs> and he said it, I was, and he said, the real seven is out there. In my grandchildren, I see a real seven. 
So most likely, an attempt, people don't know that people like uh, Nini, North Korea, um, Chuba, even the monarchies as those of Saudi Arabia and those Arab countries just started like that. Mm. And, and people just get prepared. So for me, my humble view is it's not time for people to be, it's now you are this party, you are a civil servant, you are Simanya, whatever. Whoever is going to face it, even you journalists, we shall be accomplices to this project. Thank you, Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi. Interesting projection right there. Let's take a break. We'll begin with you, uh, Honorable Jad Karhanga, for this break. But also, um, uh, the CDF is uh, the president's son, is the MK uh, project finally taking shape. All that after this short commercial break. On the reshuffles both in the cabinet and the UPDF in the studios this morning, I'm hosting Nicolas Opio, who is a political analyst, Dr. Miria Matembe, uh, who is um, an elder. Are you still a politician? I don't think so. Mm, but, I but found out by the way that I was only a political worker. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> me, the character I have yeah. cannot be of a politician. <laughs> <laughs> political worker. Who was in the political <laughs> space. Who, you've, you've accused <laughs> Museven for killing your political life. <laughs> uh, Honorable Mwanga Chivumi, Member of Parliament for Butambala <laughs> County, and the Honorable Gerard Karhanga is a spokesperson of the Alliance for National uh, Transformation. Honorable uh, Gerard Karhanga, I want to begin with you. Is the MK project finally now taking shape? If anyone had doubt, maybe this is the time that they should accept that this project has finally taken shape with the new changes. In 2013, in August particularly, Makere University invited President John Kufo. Um, and then we were invited to a small dinner as young leaders. You were you were a guild president then. Then I was youth MP. Mm. Um, and then uh, we had an interaction. Let me ask him one question, Mr. President. Do you ever get time to talk to your colleagues who have left f left power? The man looked very good. He looked very mm. very fresh. He looked happy. He looked amazing and said, this man, maybe he could help this continent and engage his colleagues and go around, talk to them. And, and then <laughs> so when we asked him the question, he looked at us and first smiled. He said, dear fellows, I, I still want to leave Kampara happily. <laughs> then he said, <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine what that meant. <laughs> uh, uh, so he, sa he said, you know, a number of uh, my colleagues, and I could see them, this is now President Kufo speaking, I could see them at the African Union um, in Addis. He said, you look at them, it, for them it appears life begins with being a president and ends with being a president. Mm. And for some reason, some of them, the power has got them so much into their heads. Like even talking to them, you wonder whether it even adds up. But he said, even that said, some of us made it our business to engage and talk to them one by one. But not surprisingly, he added, they look at us as if we are the crazy ones. How do you leave power just like that? When you are still strong, but when you also have a family. And so, back to Mohozi's case. I mean, let's, let's examine this very critically. Where does this government derive its legitimacy? Where does President Museveni start from? I mean, we can go around it, we can try to window dress it in the last maybe a few decades. He has been trying to sh put up a show of some quasi democracy. But the truth is, this is a military man. This is a fellow who decided that, you know, I mean, he had tried so many elections. Yeah, and he had uh, at least, um, uh, at least, uh, I mean, you're you on record for even Honorable Matim, you, you, I mean, yeah. you, you've won these elections. <laughs> when he came with UPM, yes, was yes. entirely with him in UPM. Uh -huh. We ran with him in UPM, but he, of course, he didn't win. So, <laughs> so he so went to the bush. Yes, 
so he, he, it's he defeated by some Kutesa in DP. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it said he really lost miserable. Probably was number three in the rest. Mm. We only got one member of parliament. Yeah, in Nigeria, in, in Kasesi. Who was also by accident, I think, because they had killed the DP candidate. <laughs> yes. So, so this man <coughs> heavily believes that his political existence is basically the army, the militarization of politics. So it is all hinged around him being Savaruan. Exactly, Savaruan. Mm. And it's not surprising. Uh, and I think Ugandans really, uh, we, we just need to keep watching and listening mm. keenly. I mean, when he says that, how can a piece of paper take, uh, take me out of power? Mm. A mere piece of paper. The ballot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- this is the ballot paper. Um, we've seen elections. The, the, the deployment, I mean, like, I, I, mean uh, I, I can speak, let's say, for Ntungamo. The deployment of the army. In 2016, we woke up and found thousands of soldiers dressed, you know how uh, uh, soldiers dress in bullets? As if it's a, it's a front line. And then everyone was saying, do, is this a, is, has it become a war zone? I remember General Mount being, uh, 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 being interviewed as early as about 8 a.m. Mm. And uh, he was questioning whether this had really become a... Now, we thought, I think since we had spoken against it and, you know, and they had also not achieved their ends, then maybe 2021 would be different. We found again exactly the same. So what does the president now think? So he realizes that, you know, for me... To remain powerful, to pass on this power to my family, the pass, the the pipeline has to be militarization. And if you've been keenly watching, almost every five years, there is a further step of militarizing every aspect of this country. So initially it was it was him and his team. They came around, so they had fought and so forth. Thought, oh, maybe, maybe let's give them a benefit of doubt. So the first ten years, uh, it wasn't surprising that, uh, for instance, uh, 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 DP cooperated. Uh, I mean, if you recall, the, the Kawanga Semo girls were in, in cabinet. So people had this same sense of maybe let's give the benefit of doubt. Mm. And then that period passed. And then. You bring a constitution, and then now in 1995, and then you bring in the army into parliament. Now, from there, we've been seeing, I mean, you look at police, for instance. Police, police largely is more or less like another arm of UPDF. So it's not surprising that now some permanent secretaries are also soldiers. Mm-hmm. It's not. You know, we, 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 we need... We need <laughs> Another day, <laughs> we in, know, in the past, yeah. I wanted to to send go yes to CID. Yes, the question was <laughs> how will <laughs> the CID? How is the CID <laughs> going? <laughs> so, so the 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 the, 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 the pipeline, the, mm-hmm. the the approach, the, the the approach has been militarize every aspect, militarize every aspect, and so. So he realized that maybe, but I know I need to come off as, as a bit democratic. So let people speak. Let it be there be some radio stations, some TVs. People should be able to speak. And I uh, saw so when you know, we are internationally. I know every time we talk about freedom of the press, and Nicholas knows this, we talk about the number of radio stations that are on, on the airwaves. <laughs> so, so, so all this, all all this has been largely trying to balance the whole militarization aspect. Mm. But in the real sense, in the real sense. You know, hmm. when, I, when I was a student leader, one afternoon, we had this uh, demonstration and insisted that, you know, uh, government must pay the lecture as well. And so I got a phone call from the head of CMI at that time. And then shortly after, almost like 10 minutes, the, the, the commander then, I think it was army commander, CDF, I think, hadn't been created as a title, also called. And they were saying one thing, and I kept laughing. You know, it's good to be uh, angry, I think. They're saying, we are going to crash, crash, and pound, pound that small head of yours. <laughs> you are causing mayhem. You are. And then I would laugh. And they say, you are actually laughing? <laughs> and then I said, 
said, but what do you expect me to do? That you think you're going to threaten every person in this country by virtue of your uniform, and everyone is going to be intimidated and, and is pushed to a corner. I said, that's not going to happen. You find money and pay these lectures. Now, at that time, I hadn't taken keen appreciation on how deep usage of the army in entrenching this regime was being smartly orchestrated in a rather very cunning way. So, so then later I joined parliament. Then I begin seeing one thing after another, one thing after another. So Muhozi Kinel Gawa, I, I don't know, I, I keep thinking if there is anyone who really still cares about that family, and uh, mm. luckily, we have some senior citizens who had the opportunity to, to work with, uh, with, 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 with this government. I think they need to be really, really properly advised. Okay. I don't think that anyone can imagine that there is a likelihood of Ugandans being very resigned to the extent of creating another North Korea here in Uganda, here in Africa again. I do not think so. So I think someone has to to, to really find a way. Uh, uh, there's a time I went and spoke to Archbishop uh, Orombi. Mm. I just took time. I said, maybe there must be some people who can still speak to this man. So when I was, uh, when I was, when I was with him, I said, maybe we need to make, a, make it our business. So I found about four elders and went to, on a personal note, um, and, and, and I wasn't surprised. They all, all, almost all of them were saying the same thing in chorus. That this man no longer listens to anyone. Thank you, Honorable Gerard Karhanga. Okay. Honorable Thank Chibimba, you. I know you have uh, limited time, so I'll begin with you on, 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 on this note. Um, I, I, as much as many would say the MK project is finally taking shape, but we've seen the PLU moving around and making barazas and moving around the country. And uh, the loyalists of the PLU have now been appointed to cabinet, but even their leader has also now been ev given more duties. Uh, as much as you would say it's taking shape, but at the same time, PLU uh, perhaps has, would you say it's been bruised? Or this is part of the plan? It's part of the plan. And, and as, I've, as Gerard has expounded a little bit, Uganda's need to be now. You see, while we are young people, these matembes never believed in us. We told, I ran a campaign here called Popular Resistance mm. against mm. Life Presidency. You kind of could not believe. When was that? When we were lifting the term limits. But then I, I, then I, 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 I was believing you. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 she's among the very people who spoke up. Yes, I guess. Yeah. And I think that was the departure. Like that's how you left the government. That's when they left the government. And I, I shed my tears in parliament when they passed it. 54 were against it. I stood up and I said, from today, only Uganda, only oh God mm. will deliver so, Uganda. Mm. I had seen it. So mm. we, 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 we ran a campaign flagging off this lifting of term limits that effectively it will usher in a life presidency. A lot of skeptical people. Oh, you? Hmm? You were with us on that. We were, we were like, life presidency? In this era and age? Mm -hmm. that, that could be, this should be crazy. It can't happen. So they said, but the Constitution says 75, one will leave. But we kept saying, but this 75 is amendable mm -hmm. by some good soul in, in some building here in Parliament. And those good souls, but also interestingly, and I know that the MP I will not mention because she cautioned me not to put her in that light. She kept mentioning, when uh, Tumukunde and even the president invited the MP on the lifting of the age limit, when Karas MP, <laughs> which Gerard knows by that time was in parliament, said, I'm president on age limit, and president, this is the transaction. Did you are going to stay in parliament, okay? In, <laughs> you stay president. But for us, once we give you this one, the population is going to, to kick us out. So let us carry to it five years, a monument, give us the money, we give you what you want. The settlement then was handed and 
But they had wanted two billion. On yeah. yes. It was the transaction was like it was two two. No, you remember um uh term limit it was it was Five, five million, five million. which was given mm. to those yeah. who just <laughs> that was the yeah. first official <laughs> corruption. Yes. At, 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 no, recently, um, but, 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 but honorable Chivumbi, then, then you can say that uh, perhaps if they are accusing the president of life presidency, that MPs were accomplices, of yeah, course, no, no, of no. course. You, you see, that's yeah. how they, they are tools. Basically, they, they are tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, a yeah. parliament that yeah. checks government. The letter yeah. Ranya told me in his office, but Chivumbi. I see every day uh, struggling that maybe you have not understood one thing mm. that this parliament mm. is not here to check a government. This parliament is a facilitate it facilitates government. And the day you learn that, yeah, you will. <laughs> yes, but but but, 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 but so that, that's the point that yeah, you, yes. you sit on an accountability committee. So what's the whole essence? No, 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 that's for another day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I will invite me and tell you what, what I'm discovering. And you know, uh, it's also an amazing, and Honorable uh, Matembe talked about it. Mm. If you want to know the extent of, of decision-making in this country, every PS you call and question him about a certain substantive amount of money, how it was spent, they tell you it was a presidential directive. It is the cutters of the blue letter, the what they call a blue letter. And sometimes even that blue letter is not there. It's just a memo. Just the cabinet. president came, briefed cabinet, he minuted, and that's the basis of why resources, huge resources, contracts award, and everything. You deal with all of them. It's, it's because the president said so. And the minister will tell you, P.S., what did we do? This was a presidential directive. Say so now it is illegal. Say so you can take us to prison, but <laughs> what would we have done? But so I've, I've, I've seen calls and concerns that you know you have the powers as parliament to say you know what we'll freeze the budget of this specific ministry until. Are you the <coughs> chair of that parliament? The chair of parliament we've, we've we've mentioned the people who want to blame parliament. Parliament is also a captured institution. It's part of a sick body. The few souls that are there that can speak out, who can also be like Matembe, Just come to radio yes. and, and maybe the other thing is, as Gerard knows, is out of the process. Me and Gerard fought to when they were stealing COVID money. Mm. Okay? You remember the hassle. We just to be allowed, and, and do you know why there was a resistance? A rumor went around that in that COVID money, there is also something for you. For yeah. They would yeah. not yeah. even yeah. allow you, members of parliament, will not even allow you present yeah. a report. The minority report of two pages. Of two pages. But needed so about five minutes. <laughs> we are late. <laughs> 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 it's because, uh, see, uh, which uh, brings uh, us, the other thing is, so is that sad. how is this being, you have analyzed the army. The other thing Uganda needs to sit down and analyze properly now is how Museven uses money and how he has weaponized it, and how it's destroying institutions, that w and how it is also destroying individuals, and how it is stigmatizing civil society, they paid a high price for it. Today, what you have of civil society we are not there. Is, is no longer the civil society. We are not there. You have got to make compromises if you are to exist. Mm -hmm. Now, parliament is on the payout. All of you? It can, it can no, be a few. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not all of, but you see, you take the aggregate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> History is generic. Yeah, it's it's like 95 percent. <laughs> you can as well say parliament. <laughs> you don't, yeah. you don't need to pay like all of them. You need <laughs> just a substantial <laughs> but number. But wait, and but it's not the rest. A parliament which is on payroll or the whole public. If this thing goes down no, to the yes, oral no, 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 but honorable about Chivumbi, it goes back the, the, to you that, 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 you that could have been the other Chivumbi, it goes back to you that you have failed no, to convince your colleagues to no, colleagues no, to see no, the no, point. No, no. The to, whole to, of to the clergy in Uganda, mm. the whole clergy, you see, the bishops you are talking to, as long as you are driving a car donated to you by the president and never ask from which budget, okay? They, they lose it out. They lose it out. The Pentecostals, they, they lose out. So, even media, 
Even you, media, I deal with you every day. You are not spared. Honorable Chofumbe, why don't you convince I your colleagues know, in parliament, scenario, especially those where that have an the issue. numbers? And after, after, you know, actually when we were dealing with the COVID money with Gerard, I met a group of media being taken to a boardroom to be paid out so that this story does not run out. Honorable, it goes back to you. So, why so don't you know. convince your colleagues, no, the, ones the, numbers, no, the ones with no, the numbers, the ones with the numbers in parliament, why don't we convince to make Ugandans? Sure. Mm. Okay, Ugandans. Why don't we convince Ugandans that it is high time we all made a big statement that said enough is enough. Because even if you want to isolate parliament and say, you know, it's parliament here. Parliament feeds from the rest of, of the energy from the country. It, it is captured. So Some when you have all these matembes, now today, how Some. many, there are so many old women that I see you every day. You have only remained with the matembe. You, you call out on front line, you have <laughs> on the you big talk. <laughs> <laughs> you think she's the only one of her age? <laughs> there are so many around, uh, and with the same knowledge oh, base they she are has. They but are because you see, they are one, they are <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> because the, 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 they've been bought off. Yeah, they've been bought off. Even intellectuals, by the way, when you see so many of these academicians having consultancies of some nature, I've looked at the way the budget of consultants across the budget line, and who takes it? The moment you have a consultancy, mm. I know a very good, now you have Spire. The day Spire will be given a consultancy of drawing some cartoons somewhere for the military, blah, 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 or teach armies the power of cartoons, you will be gone. <laughs> the power of cartoons. <laughs> so, so, oh, no, be, um, so we'll be, and we've seen them go like that. Before you conclude, um, uh, ad address the Mohozi presidency. No, no, the, the Mohozi the presidency as, as an ambition is given. There's no nothing like now Ugandans can keep quiet about it. But the only failure of Ugandans is for them to fail to convince themselves. I one day was speaking, let me say, I was speaking to my president, Bobby Wine. I told him, you know, Your Excellency, if we fail to convince Ugandans that Mohoz and Museven are one and the same, and a continuation, and we fail on a very legitimate, obvious case. Because I see people like now want to, to speak about Muhoz as a presidency. Why don't you term it the continuation of Museven? The kingdom. Of the kingdom. But don't know about your And, and for you want to isolate and mm. convince Ugandans that is the, the Muhoz presidency in the office. Th there's a power that lies. No, no, no. There's no, a power that the lies. The thing in is, there's a power that lies put in the right in question. The ink. Because even you, media, you have the power to shape a narrative. Okay. You, why do you set a, a wrong narrative convincing Uganda that there is a Mohozi president? There is a continuation of, of Museven and an attempt to build a the kingdom. The There's a power that lies why, why in, 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 in the pen, the Canada, on the ballot Canada, let's just discuss that the rest of the Ugandans no, have. Let us discuss the real issue. Mm. The real issue is not Mohoz for presidency. The real issue at hand yeah. is a family rule. Yeah. Thank you. Do Thank you want a family? Let's debate that. But okay. those of you want now to, 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 to shape a narrative mm. that is there is a Mohoz presidency, that it is legitimate, that it is authentic, it is organic. Mm. No. This is a, co it is cost, it's, it is planned by the state. And I've told you earlier that what you see is not an attempt to only have Mohoz Kainerugaba as a president. Even a grandson is being prepared. And therefore, all of us, we must face this. So don't give country a wrong narrative. Muhoz is the biggest corruption that has happened in this country. He got against the law. He entered the military wrongly. Nepotism. He nepotism. And, and nepotism comes. I think nepotism is not, is not permissible in Uganda. But, 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 mm -hmm. but if you say this is a crisis, you have um, even boycotted the parliament over an issue that you thought um, was non-debatable, which is uh, the missing 18. If you say that this is a crisis and the country must address it, we've not seen you as, let's say, opposition or parliament come up because you're the, you're the people, you're the legislators, no, you're the people that hold the law, you see you're the people supposed to protect it. I keep it. saying, a walkout of 20, of 50, even 100 MPs will not happen. What can stop this, if not to tell you, if, if we can bring this country to a standstill? 
The question is, yeah. that's it. Just don't look at parliament. If all of you can, yeah. you'd say, to hell with this. Why should we will stop this. We will st no, no, I'm not exonerating. Then parliament, we will walk out, and the only thing we'll do is to invite the media on a big talk. But mm. Canary, if I can, just one very, because you are squeezing him for nothing, you know <laughs> what is going on. <laughs> Recently, about this money, uh, parliament exposure, mm. ex ex exhibition, exhibition, mm. eh? When there was parliament exposition, and everybody knew all this, eh? and the speaker called parliament, okay, to decide their own things. And then there was a, a, a talk that the opposition, not opposition, I don't call it opposition. Me, I call it people who love Uganda, who don't want our money to be stolen. But for them, they call it opposition, the members of parliament, who wanted to, to, ra to, to raise this issue in parliament, floor, in parliament. Don't you know that the military and police was released to parliament, it engulfed parliament, we could not go to parliament. Just the other day, just the other day. Now, if you know that, why do you start questioning him all that time? Because you know that they told you militarization. Anybody whom they think is coming to do whatever, military, grab, and that kind of thing. So don't be, also you press. Ask us the right questions. Don't just squeeze us. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> because you know what is happening. What can parliament do? Okay, I choose them of being both and so on and so forth. But as long as the, those who don't like what is being done are very few, they cannot do anything to change the decisions there. Why, why, why I was questioning you is because they have the mandate of the people and the, they have the privilege of holding that mandate. By the way, do they and, even and have the mandate if they were both? Did they even elect, did they decide on their own and elect the members of parliament they wanted? Please go down. We are talking about Uganda as, uh, as a nation, okay. not just institutions okay. here and N there. N Nicholas Opio, let me bring in here. Um, it, now, do we say now that the MK project is finally taking shape? No, no, it's, 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 uh, it, it's those, tho see, see, because people who said this was a project many years ago, were dismissed as jokers. You remember and, and what happened to, s <laughs> to General Seju, uh, you know, when he said these things. Or what happened to uh, Mwanga Chivumbi and his group? They were being beaten and arrested every day, <laughs> demonstrating against the life presidency. So this thing has been in the works for a long time. And I think that it would have even been um, actually now in force if you had uh, perhaps a if it was somebody else, because the biggest problem to Mozi is Mozi himself, okay? So this is not a s secret anymore that there's an attempt to try and uh, pass on the presidency to a family member. That is not a problem now. I mean, people know it. I think that what we have to do is begin to think about, so first reflect on how we got to this point, the machinations that have been made to get us to this point and, and, and begin to ask, what are the building blocks that is being used to propel this legacy of the Buhose thing? And how can the people begin to dismantle that? Because I think that you're going to plunge this country into real chaos if you have a Buhose presidency. There's no doubt about it. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you, 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 you call it um, chaos. Mm -hmm. um, what? And I want to ask this mm -hmm. genuinely. What is wrong with uh, a Buhose presidency? Look. Anybody has the right to contest the presidency mm. if they played by the rules. He's not playing by the rules. In fact, if you criticize him, you might get arrested, might get beaten, get all manners of, of, of intimidation. And if he was playing by the rules that everybody is playing by, which rules? There wouldn't be a problem. If he wanted to contest for the presidency, for an elective office, resign from the army. But you're using the pub public resources to mobilize for a presidency. Everything about what he's doing is illegal. It's a violation of the law. People who have done this in the past spent 11 years in jail for simply speaking about it on the radio. General Tumukunde, ask him. And yet Muhozi has broken every single rule in the book to propel himself to the presidency. So mm. if he was playing by the rules, mm. no problem. We would meet him in the arena and speak to him and engage him. But he's not playing by the rules. And that is the problem. 
Now, why do I think that there will be chaos? First, it's the character of the, of the individual. I mean, you know it. It's been playing out in the public. He is not the sort of person who you can say is a deep thinker, a calm, strategic mind. You've seen the things that he's tweeting. So first, it's just his character. Putting that kind of individual in charge <laughs> would portend chaos for this country. But, but secondly, but let me just make a point. Secondly, mm. you have people who are in the armed forces who speak to you quietly and hold him in complete disdain because they know the kind of person that he is and how he has been hoisted over them. And so there are people within the armed forces who tell you, you know, this is not going to happen under my watch. You know, you are going to have a big problem in that space. People who don't respect him see him as, a, as somebody who has just been, uh, you know, uh, favored to get where he's at, who really is not uh, one of them. And so you have that. The third thing is this. The third thing is this. And you see the conduct of his group when they go around the country doing what they do. That is not a group that is calm, strategic, in whose hands you can put this country. My own view is that if he wants to be president, we don't blame him for being born in the bedroom that he was made. Let him play by the rules. Uh, Nicholas, you don't judge the character perhaps by, 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 by um, mere looking at the tweets. You judge character, he was in charge of um, the land forces. If he had plunged that institution of the land forces into chaos, then mm -hmm. you would say, you see, he has been in charge before, and this is where we are. Mm -hmm. He has been in charge of uh, a number of institutions, including uh, the Special Forces Command, mm -hmm. and now he's in charge of the entire army, the army commander. So mm -hmm. wha what I'm saying is that you don't judge character by, 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 by tweets. Look, we are all the sums of what we do and what we say. Mm. We can't divorce that loose tweeting individual from the person that you're talking about this is one and the same and that is a demonstration of character the things you do privately the things you do in the comfort of your room the tweeting you send it shows out who you are really it is an expression of your thought processes and who you are as a person now again you can say he was in charge of these institutions. We don't have the benefit first to audit those institutions because they are armed forces. But if you speak to people who are in those institutions, everywhere he has been sent, he has been accompanied by some brilliant chap who actually does the work. Mm. And he uh, takes the credit. You know, many of those people who have in the past have followed him wherever he has gone. And I don't think that the person, he may, he may have been an soldier when and i'm not saying he's completely useless he may have had some good things he has done in the army but i don't think that those things have been done purely on merit you know okay because of who he is I, I don't think he's the very best soldier in this country i don't think he is also made army commander because of merit it's because of who his father is let's take a break we'll turn with your opinion dr media matembe after this short commercial break Big Talk, every day, every issue. This is the Big Talk. It's one one next radio. Correct. Uh, things which are happening behind our backs. And here at Next Radio, we take that very seriously. If you're looking for quality debate, holding power accountable, and getting to the bottom of every issue. This is the Big Talk. Good morning. Catch the Big Talk with Kanari Mugume every Saturday, 9 to 11 a.m. Only on Next Radio. Next radio, this is the big talk. My name is Kanari Mugume in the studios this morning. We're shining a spotlight on the reshuffles uh, that the president did um, around cabinet and the UPDF, and we're questioning whether the MK project is finally taking shape. In the studios this morning, I'm hosting Nicholas Opio, Dr. Media Matembe, together with uh, the Honorable Gerard Karhanga. And uh, we actually reached out to government, that's uh, Dr. Chris Bariomunsi, but uh, um, for, for, for some reason, almost uh, all uh, government officials are in Bukedia because the president is camping in uh, the speaker's uh, district and uh, there's, uh, I think, a number of projects that are going to be launched th actually today. Uh, so they couldn't be on the show. Dr. Matembe, uh, you had some comments to make. B b but also, uh, Nicholas was saying that, that it is chaos if the country allows the Mohosi presidency 
to to take shape why what is wrong with that say that so now mm. despite the fact that the ex expo exposition <laughs> of <laughs> exhibition <laughs> of, of parliament showed how the the, the Uganda taxpayers' money has gone. Eh? Now everybody now is in in Bukedia mm. consuming the, the rest of the money. Mm. For me, at least one thing I'm happy about when you call me is that I speak to these Ugandans. One day they will not say she did not tell us. Eh? You can imagine now what is happening. Instead of questioning why, what is this money, what all of them are uh, they are dancing and enjoying the, the taxpayers' money. But anyway, uh, about to Mho's project, if you go into NBS, the, the my videos which I talk, mm. I remember saying it very clearly that Ugandans, if you are not careful, this man will rule you. It is there, it's like a prophecy. Mm. I said it. Now for me, the, the background I, would, I want to give since I'm a senior citizen. This project actually, I don't know whether it started with the declaration of, of Gaddafi or whether it is the, the uh, President Museven who told Gaddafi to declare it. We were at Kororo Airstrip on independence, celebrating independence. And this Gaddafi man, the late Gaddafi, eh, he said, you, you, why, why do you want elections? What are you talking about elections for? You, 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 you don't, don't you, this son here, he'll take over. And, and, you know, he said, you, you don't bother elections. How can you be a leader of a country and involved in elections? That was Gaddafi at Kororo Street. And he said, don't you have this, your son? Let him go. He will take over you and that's it. And then it was after Museven said, ah, like this, his hand. I don't know whether they had discussed it in the night, mm. but he, he brushed it off like that. And then, from then, that's after about a or something, the man was recruited in the army, then major, then courses, then all that. Then commander but, says to But before then, mm. when I was minister for ethics and integrity, the first round, you know, I was a minister 19 for first three years before we went to elections. And by those three years before we went to elections, when we went to elections, by then I never wanted to be appointed a minister again. But these three years, which I was struggling with, like hell, fighting corruption among the people who never, never wanted to fight it at all. The president, one time we were talking, I was telling, you know, it is very tough, these huge, big people, to catch them, the evidence and so on, I was reporting to him the challenges. Then he said, but you, why don't you go and recruit some people, you know? Get some people down there whom you can put there in institution and, uh, and they go there and spy and, you know, investigate and spy for you and then you may, you may be able to catch these people. And he said, for me, eh, I have asked uh, this Muhoz, my son, He's going in schools. I've sent him in universities in what? He's recruiting, interesting the young people to become, to be in the army. I'm sending him, he's going, he goes there around and he recruits and he in the universities. It, that was so early, 2003. And I told the president, but you say you are excellent. For you, you have a budget. You have money to do that. But for me, my ministry doesn't even have resources. And by then, my ministry was not even funded. They just funded the staff only. I used to get all the resources from donors. So I told him, that I can't, I wish I could do that. But then, it didn't click to me about recruiting the, the young people in the army. Down the road, he had done it so much, and everybody it was like the man is taking over the army. He's, you know, when Vyanyima brought it at parliament, 2000 and 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 is it 2001 around there 2001 when of course he basically had uh, decided to go to contest eh? when Vyanyima brought it in parliament said so, but you people what is most doing recruiting army people in the army 
And then people said, but this we need, this opposition people are disturbing us. Now the young man, why should they now go after the young man, innocent young man? What do they want with this innocent young man? You know, th that one. So you can see that is the history of it. Now, eventually you see where it has reached. Besides that, I want to bring Ugandans to the project of the 50 years dynasty. I don't know whether you know about that. Mm -hmm. The 60 years of dynasty. You know what dynasty means? How, how these people came in their mind that they are going to rule this Uganda. A certain, uh, should I say, ethnicity or, or tribe, but it's dynasty. Dr. Oh. Matembe, you had a chance to put I a stop. I'm, I'm now you telling you, don't shut me down. I had a chance. Were you there? Were you there? When I had a chance to speak, the, the, the was entire thrown away. That <laughs> time, that time I didn't even have the chance to speak. I had the chance to speak from the parliament. But the dynasty thing, eventually we got to like sort of minutes. We managed to secure these minutes. We said, wait a minute. Is this thing of dynasty true? And they were, they were a number of people there, 50 years of dynasty. We presented the issue as raised before parliament when there was Sekande as a speaker and then Sekande said we resolved that there would be uh, form a committee to investigate into this matter. Do you hear? And then I think eventually by then the parliament was going to recess and I mean to, to stop. Now from that time that thing of dynasty was never discussed. So I'm giving you this to show you the history of this project, say that actually whoever came to do this project came with it, I think, right from the bush. I don't know. But having said that, me, I don't want, the t I don't want to lament mm. and be desperate and be hopeless. I want to see that Ugandans, if their eyes are closed, I have always shouted to them, at least I will be redeemed that I have never kept quiet. Because there is this man, this one who read the laws, mm. who said that the people who kill the nation are not the ones who do evil, mm. but those ones who keep quiet and do nothing. Mm. So for me, I've been telling Ugandans that each of us, surely our eyes need to open. We need to open our It is not discussing Mhozi. It is not discussing Museveni. It is talking about Uganda. Uganda belongs to Ugandans. Uganda does not belong to one family. And let me tell you, actually, as of now, Uganda belongs to one family. As of now, one family has captured this nation. You know very well, even these ministers whom they appoint, it has to be Sarim Sare. You know, you know people go there. It is Sarim Sare who decides, who recommends, who does all these things, and then they appoint the ministers. Now, it is uh, uh, recommended to the president. Now the army is led by, by, by Muhoz. And of course the education is the, 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 first, the first lady. Now it is like a trinity. It, we have a, a physical trinity here in Uganda, which is now ruling and taking over Uganda. But my hope is in the holy trinity, the blessed Holy Trinity of God, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That Trinity is in full control, I can assure you. That Trinity is watching the situation. That Trinity has, it cannot be defeated by power or by might. Let me tell you, I believe in the word of God, and it is based on our, our, our motto, the foundation of this country, and that's why what I'm saying, mm. me, I am calling upon Ugandans. Dr. Matem, it's been 40 years. Uh, wait, uh, very good. The children of Israel crossed at 40 years. So don't joke with these 40 years we are coming to. I can prophesy on that. Don't joke with those 40 years you are talking about. They went in the desert round and round for 40 years. When they cried to the Lord, he had and redeemed them. And for me, I'm not here to lament. I'm not here to cry. I was here to tell you the history and all that mm. kind of thing. Mm. But my hope is in the 
holy blessed trinity not in the in the wicked trinity down here okay. and so i want to appeal to ugandans including you who is saying but it is 40 years is there anything impossible before god it is 40 years as karhanga was saying if ugandans can wake up and refuse to be bought with small money and wake up and say wait a minute is this a kingdom wait a minute can't we choose can't we have our own leaders is our nation belonging to one family if they can raise up and cry to the lord god will redeem us and i can assure you let me tell you if all of them are like i'm saying is saying and you think it will be too late these guns the guns is god who allows the bullets to get out of the guns these guns the wicked can be destroyed by their own God. And me, I want to pray. I want to pray for President Museven and his wife and his son. I want to pray for them. And I want to remind them of Gaddafi. He lost and all his children. Saddam Hussein. I want them to wake up. I'm not only calling upon Ugandans who are not in power, but also the Ugandans who are holding the power to know that this world, this world, they should live well. They should live well. Unless when we call upon our God, they may end up badly. But Dr. I Matembe, it, Dr. Matembe it, is, it is the Ugandans you're calling upon that give President Museveni a, a, comfortab a, a comfortable 50, 50, let, let me tell you, poor them, poor them, they don't give, they don't vote, they, don't, they, were, they were corrupted. Banange, it was a scheme. It was a long scheme, some of us, which we didn't know. We embrace the system knowing we are embracing Uganda for deliverance. But down the road, there was another, see, uh, some people's ambition for us, we went with the vision. Mm. And uh, when we found it for us, of us, we escaped and left. But little did I know that actually even the poor in this country was deliberately, deliberately structured to make Ugandans beg. Why was it, weren't they begging? You think this is the first time for Ugandans to be poor? Why? Because they, even there are more resources, more, more whatever factories, more everything. Why are people poorer and poorer in the mind, in the spirit, and in the heart? Dr. Matembe, this is what I'm saying, that uh, you have Ugandans that are poor, but also give President Museveni, 58.64%. Why, why if do you say they give? Who told you they give? Let me tell you, for instance, I have a personal experience. Mm. For instance, I, when, when I saw the elderly citizens suffering, eh, all the time they ran to me to fight, oh, please, we are suffering, they are taking away the land, they are beating us. I was crying out to God, who will speak to these people? Then I saw a policy that the senior citizens have got a place in parliament. They need to be represented. I said, God, you have answered me. Let me go to represent the senior citizen. Now, I and, and you know, I was really committed. When I go there, I make policies. I convince them we make policies to protect our senior citizen. Mm. Because senior citizens who retire in this country, doctors, nurses, what, they are treated like garbage. So you stood and for an election. And this nation mm. is standing on their shoulders. I said, well, I didn't know it then. Now it is also affecting me. And now there is a, a chance to go and speak for them. So you stood for I an election came, in member I of parliament came for the elderly. I woman representative for the, for the whole nation as elderly. Mm. And my mind said, if it can't be you, you are here fighting for women, for young children. For If it can't be you, who can it be? Mm. Do you know who is said to have defeated me? You will never know that woman. She will never say anything. And the years are passing. And the actually, people thought I was uh, Simanyi Chisanja, the one in Kampara. But the one, wh what do they call it? Cooperative workers, those Nsamizi. Mm -hmm. The person who studied us at Nsamizi as a, I don't know, I can't remember what they call them. But P7, P8, there, and you go to Nsamizi, and they become workers, mm. co cooperative or whatever. Now, 78 years. Hmm? And here was Miriam Atembe, a former everything, commissioner, lawyer, what? And I'm, I have the energy. I have what it takes to represent the senior citizen. Do you know what I saw? Horosero patches. Horosero. 
they released all the resources in this country. Oh, it was how many billions she, they gave her to traverse the whole country. And then on the voting itself, I tell you, and this, the electoral commissioner was there. When I reached that the election point, I found they had pitched a tent where her team was receiving all the elders who are coming in, giving them money, giving them water, and the electoral commission was there watching. And when I came, I sat there, and there was, I sat and nobody could come to me. They would give them money, give them, take them to the hotels, that was prior. Then the, I stayed there. The next day I almost did not come. I said, no, I never start things and leave. I came back, I sat there. And that night, they put them in a hotel in, in, in wherever, they made a party, they drank, they enjoyed, and on the day of elections, I went and sat there. And so they came, Uraini, uh, when I gave my statement, they all stood up and bowed and clapped to me because they knew this is the person. If she goes there, she could do something. When she stood up to campaign, she said she will make public toilets for the elders. <laughs> That's what she said. She said nothing, uh, nothing. <laughs> but when we went to vote, oh, and she danced, they were dancing. We have kicked the PhDs. We have kicked them in the dust and the sand. That's what it was. <laughs> now, have you have uh, anything to do with elderly in that parliament? Five people are there. Have you ever had anybody stand and say anything? Have you ever hosted her here even? So don't tell that Ugandan. Me, I didn't believe that an old person, a former doctor, a former what, can be both. I didn't believe it. But that's the extent okay. to which Ugandans In have been words, enslaved. The, the premise, the premise of the argument is, is that elections do not represent the wishes of the they people. Can't. And that your 58 figure is merely, can't, can't. merely formalistic. Yeah. Let's take a break. We'll return with Way Forward. Big Talk every week. Discussions around current affairs. Big Talk every week. Discussions around Stay informed. Stay ahead. Afro Mobile brings you the latest in everything current affairs. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, get a first preview to the most pressing issues locally and internationally, all in the palm of your hand. Afro Mobile, the future is now. M only on Next Radio. 106.1 Next Radio. This is uh, the big talk onto our last segment of uh, Way Forward. And uh, in the studios uh, this morning, I'm hosting uh, Nicholas Opio, Dr. Miriam Matembe, and Honorable Gerard Karhanga. Uh, gentlemen and lady, w w Way Forward. I'll begin with the Honorable Karhanga. You know, sometimes uh, you look at the situation and you begin getting very, very worried. When we're in Parliament, you would meet a number of uh, colleagues, especially those who are in cabinet, in those corridors of parliament, as if you would think they would sit and agree to almost speak to you about the same. All they would say was, you people are not pushing enough. <laughs> you people are not pushing enough. Ordinary will, will the by ministers? Yes. Mm. Ordinary by now would be having another government. And I'm listening to the minister, I'm like, and, 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 and actually, they are genuinely telling you. Mm. So, so this is the thing. There has been some very consistent, well-orchestrated sense of suppression. So people have been so suppressed, increasingly, and, and, and it has been very incremental. So, y you know, they say when you get a frog and you throw it in hot water, they say like it can easily jump out. If you want to kill it well, with hot water, then you keep it in some bit of warm, and then you keep on increasing the temperature slowly, slowly, slowly. It thinks it's becoming warm, and before you know it, it's too hot, and it can no longer get out of the water. So the, the incremental aspect of suppressing the citizenry has been so systematic, so has been so tactful, mm -hmm. has been very well thought through that you almost have a people, but you think about it. In that cabinet that we are talking about, there are people who are very well schooled. There are fellows who have uh, a, um, a huge exposure. There are those who are highly politically experienced. But all that people have been reduced to is largely a survival mode. And so, 
you keep wondering so what is this wha- what's going to happen are we going to to have a country that where almost everyone is resigned where everyone has uh, retreated i actually think the opposite you know naturally the the, 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 the laws of nature are very interesting mm. when you when you oppress people so much when you you suppress them so much just like the, the, the common adage that when you 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 squeeze a dog or a cat in a corner. However weak it may be or fearing you, it reaches a point and says, uh-uh, now it's a question of saving myself. And then it turns around. So I think that all these actions, all these deliberate, unfortunate actions, by having a whole corrupt, you can imagine that, that this of cabinet now, is it, it's like saying we are on a campaign. You know how... Uh, a companies go out to do campaigns uh, to promote certain things. This seems to be like a career campaign to say, oh, corruption, uh, aggrandizement, siphoning of public resources is okay. It is nice. We embrace it, and this is the way to go, and that's how we run our government. Look at, you mean, look, look at them. On, on the other hand, uh, one could say that he acted at least by dropping. Act, uh, 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 which action? By Let's dropping Nandu too, and. Uh, Come on. You know, th- 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 there, is, um, there is symbolism. In, in if you've been very keen about uh, President Seven's approach, he, he has a huge element of, uh, of of symbolism. So you you give some people something to to, to see and, and maybe talk about. I mean, think. Uh, I mean, if it was about the Mabati, we know who took most. Yeah, we know that uh, the Prime Minister and the Vice President took most of those Mabati, followed by. Yeah, the, the minister w- was there, but oh, and, and that many of them anyway. So, kind of we, we, we have a, we have a family situation in this country that probably I am not. I've been trying to read and check, see whether there is any country that has had a situation whereby the president has a son as the head of the army, he has a wife as a minister of education, he has a brother as the de facto minister of finance. And a huge control of so much of what happens in this country. Uh, and now you've well now we've also been hearing that the one of the daughters may also be running for parliament. My niece is, my niece is um, sister so the, the whole thing is so entrenched. But there's something that this 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 government forgets, or pr- pr- particularly President Seven forgets. Mm. And he has had friends. So we we all know uh, you <laughs> we all know. Gaddafi was President Seven's friend. We all know that President Seven was a friend to Bashir. We all know that President Seven was very close to President Mugabe. There is a book called the, the Two Weeks in November by Douglas Rogers. It's a clear manifestation of how power left Mugabe and his family. The day he clearly decided to put his wife, and I mean, he had been working on it. It was very evident everywhere. He would say it, he would promote it, he would, you know, until it was very finally now clear that, you know what? Now the next president is Mugabe's wife. That's when now everyone said, you know what? I think... We have been patient. We've been waiting. And so that's why when all this looks so uh, ugly and sad, I keep thinking that there is some heavy power of the remnants. That, um, that in life, you can, you can have a situation where everything looks so, so, so sad, so, so worrying. And then, then in that very situation, you get a few individuals who eventually come out and say, but wait a minute. This is a country that is more important than all of us as individuals. Okay. So I can assure you <coughs> that well as the idea is to get all of us give up so that they can entrench their family rule, mm. I think this could actually mobilize the entire country in a very unbelievable way. They get together and say, please, we've been patient with you. You've had enough. It's high time we give our country. Thank you, Honorable.
Thank you, Honorable Judge. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I'll give one minute each to Nicholas and Dr. Matembe. Uh, Nicholas, uh, your, your parting shot, one minute. Th there's no hiding anymore. Ugandans now know. Our role is to give them information. The choice is for them to make. Whether they would, uh, to use Mbide's word, koto, in this puhu. <laughs> 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 thank you, thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> Doctor Matem, you have the uh, last word on the show. I, I agree with these two. I uh, I agree with Karhanga, but my my pain is about by the time the Redeemer comes, where where is this nation? That, that you, if you look at the countries we are giving you, whether Congo, whether where where the nation is <laughs> finished. But I want to tell Ugandans that our nation right now is still can be redeemed when it is not already finished. Mm. And therefore, my appeal to them is, you know, each of us has got a role. But each of us has got, we are talking to open their ears and open their eyes so that they may see. And when they see and say, no, not, not, not again, enough is enough then they can raise and act. But whereas Karanga is saying, yeah, somebody may arise somewhere, I want to relate it to our God. Because when you read the Bible, whenever the children of Israel were bad off, bad off, God could raise somebody, somebody from the book of Judges. You go and read the book of Judges. Whenever they would be so bad off, suffering, squeezed and so on, and they cry to God, out of somehow, miraculously, God raised a redeemer. Okay. So me, I'm telling Ugandans, and I'm praying for President Museven and his family, and I will say it again and again, and I pray to God that he may release them, give them the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation that they may know that holding this power is not all there is in life, and that they may know that they either follow the right way or God will release what he will release. Thank I you. pray them that they may be enlightened. And then Ugandans, 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 rise up. The Lord will rise with you and heal your land. Thank you, Dr. Matembe, and thank you to you two gentlemen for honoring our invitation to appear here on The Big Talk. Let's go live to Bukedia, where the president of Uganda, Yoram Seveni, is set to launch uh, the Bukedia Teaching Hospital, opened up by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Aneta Mong, area woman member of parliament, and uh, this uh, will, of course, uh, be offering free maternity and uh, will be, of course, giving care to mothers in Bukedia. Let's go live in Bukedia. This has been The Big Talk. We'll return Monday, 7 to 8 p.m. Good morning. Big Talk, hosted by Kanere Mugume. On 106.